Hi and welcome to the live stream. Hey everyone. Uh, today we are talking about why I leave in all my mistakes when recording a song. And if you don't know me, hi, my name is Fabian Holland. I'm a singer, songwriter, guitarist. Uh, I'm based in Berlin. And if you're into acoustic guitars, open tunings, and depressing folk songs, then you're in the right place. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. So yeah, why I leave in all my mistakes when recording a song. This is one of my favorite subjects to talk about. Um, this, I'm quite passionate about this. So I did an album recently, well, say recently, in 2020, I did an album called Under the Red Island Bakery. Here it is here. And I recorded the whole album in one day. And it was really quite amazing to do that. And the reason why I chose to do that is because, you know, I believe that it's leaving in any mistakes that I had. You know, I, I didn't leave myself any chances to make any mistakes. Um, and this is the best way to do it, you know, because I did it all in one day. And uh, yeah, it was basically, it's a very honest and raw and rough way of doing things. And that's kind of how I like to listen to music. And that's how, how I like to to perform music as well um yeah but basically it was all done in in one day the whole album from start to finish i'm talking about just recording you know um and it was i not only was i playing guitar and singing at the same time it was also being filmed as well so that was kind of added pressure as well um, it was all done in this room. Uh, we basically live underneath an old bakery. Um, or this room is underneath an old bakery. That's why I called it Under the Red Island Bakery. But uh, yeah, it was basically done in in this room the whole day. And so I had it filmed and um, it was, you know... It was a lot of pressure. <laughs> and you can see on the the photo here that I'm basically I was also switching between instruments. So I had I had my lap steel to one side and I had another instrument as well. The my slide guitar as well was to another side and I had various instruments around me. So I would be like mid song and I would grab another instrument and sort of play on top of that and stuff like this. But if you want to check it out, I'll, I'll put in links down in the description uh, below as well. But uh, so you can you can check it out. It's on Spotify and everything. And there's some videos on my YouTube channel of this. But, um, you know, this was uh, let's talk about why I chose to do this, because this is a, it was a, a very something that possibly people wouldn't usually do, you know, um, and. I feel that when something is recorded live with mistakes in and everything, you know, it has it has a more human element to it. It has a more honest and real feel to it, you know. Um, and this is what I love. This is what I love to hear. Um, but if anyone's watching out there, if you're watching live, uh, you know, let me know where you're watching from. Go for it. Just put it in the comments and let me know where you're watching from if you're watching live or if you're watching on the replay. Go for it. Um, so I've started doing these these uh, these live streams now every Saturday and I'm kind of trying things out, you know. I'm trying things out. Um, it's all... Uh, it's all a bit of an experiment, to be honest. <laughs> but 
But anyway, here we go. I'm sorry if I appear a little uh, tired. I just put my six-year-old to bed and uh, he still likes me to lie with him a little bit until he falls asleep, which means I fall asleep. So um, I need to have a listen out for him. If he wakes up, I'm just going to have to run and then you'll be left with watching nothing. I'm sorry, but I'll come back as soon as I can. You know, I should have a little uh, a little trailer or something, you know, I can hit and then you can watch one of my songs or something like this. That would be cool. Uh, but anyway, back to it. So uh, we are talking about why I leave all my mistakes in when recording a song. And, you know, it's not like I, I enjoy all of the mistakes. <laughs> I don't enjoy all of them. Um, we talked about why, you know, why I leave them in. It's it's a more human and it's a more honest and it's a more real feel, I believe. Um, you know, I'm not the best musician by any means at all. Um, and, you know, in fact, like what I'm doing here with the live streams and on this channel, I think about a lot, actually, what am I doing? You know, what am I actually, what am I trying to do with this? What am I trying to achieve with this uh with this channel and it's uh it's not like I have to be achieving something all the time you know um but I think sometimes it's quite a good idea to kind of have have an objective with what you're doing and I kind of like to have that with whatever I'm doing and I do have an objective I do have an objective and one of them is to kind of talk about what I'm doing almost like a documenting what I'm doing creatively and what interests me, you know. Um, and another thing is to create a community uh, with people that like the same kind of stuff that I like and have the same kind of values that I have. And I'm talking about musical values. And and you might be thinking, what are, what do you mean, Fabian? Musical values? What does that even mean? Uh, you know, this is one of my musical values, I would say, is why I leave in all my mistakes. I, I like to listen to music that has these kind of mistakes in. And I say mistakes, but it's has these other sounds. I'm all, I should say unexpected sounds, has unexpected sounds in. And, you know, you get this a lot with people that improvise as well. And, you know, it could be improvisation is unexpected isn't it you know it's we don't expect to go in a certain way but that's that's where it's going and I love to listen to music that has this as well um and there's a you know there's something that draws me into music that is very rough and raw and honest and just this kind of these kind of elements and it's not necessarily a specific type of music as well I should mention that you know it's not necessarily um, something that is blues or folk you know it could be anything it could be you know it, <laughs> it could be electronic dance music but it, if it has these elements in rough and raw and and has lots of feeling and and soul and dynamics and emotion you know then then I'm into it you know then I'm into it so these are kind of what I mean by musical values. Um, but so anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, I'm not the best musician. I'm not the best musician at all. You know, I sing out of tune. I sing out of tune all the time. And but that's OK. But that's OK, you know, because and I've, I've it's something that I've had to had to learn to deal with. Um, and I make mistakes all the time. And that's also okay. It's something that I've had to learn to accept and to to almost like and enjoy, you know. Um, I mean, to sing perfectly in tune, you know, it's really hard. It's really quite, quite hard to sing perfectly. Um, because, you know, if you think of a note like that, I don't know if you see that. It's basically like a line, right? I'll switch it over to the other camera. Hold on. There we go right it, when we sing it's basically we're going we're, we're fluctuating between 
up and down between that note you know it's it's just natural um very few people hit it perfectly all the time you know it's natural to have these these sharp going a little bit sharp going a little bit flat it's um it, it, it's what makes us human you know so when people use auto tune all the time which a lot of pop music they're using auto tune and a lot of other music as well they're using auto tune um you know it takes away the 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 human element of things i believe it it it, it kind of makes it a bit more makes it more robotic you know um, and I want to hear these. I want to hear when the voice breaks a little bit and, and it, it makes the voice a little bit more vulnerable, you know. And when we hear these things, then it, 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 I think that's a good way of emotion, you know. That's, 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 what we, that's what we like to hear, you know. So that's what I believe anyway. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one, you know. It's an interesting one. Um, So I'm not the best musician, you know, at all. And that's okay. And that's okay. Some other albums, uh, some other great albums that uh, inspired me, especially for this, for me making this album. Uh, you see that. Um, was, I'm a big fan of Kelly Joe Phelps. A big, big fan. He's been a big inspiration to me uh, throughout the years. And he had an album called Roll Away the Stone. And I think he released it in 1997, I think. And uh, this was just him, some guitars, and his apartment. I can't remember where the apartment was. Some Somewhere in the US. Somewhere in the US. Some city. And... You know, uh, this is it. This is all he'd had. And he had an at an ADAT recorder. And an ADAT is like basically a digital audio tape recorder. And these came around in like, I think like the, the late 80s, early 90s. I've actually got one. Um, not an ADAT recorder. ADAT recorders were like a bit big. Were like the sort of professional grade um a lot of recording studios had ADAT recorders. I've got a DAT recorder, which is a bit more portable. But, you know, I've got these tapes here, actually. If I grab one. You know, these what the... They're still in the box, but... This is what the tapes look like. They just look like normal tapes. But get the box out. And, you know, they're not analog tapes. They're actually digital tapes. Here we go. See if I can get one out. Mm. It's really old. <laughs> That's what they look like, you know. And you stick it in the the DAP recorder, and it records digital tape. And you know, actually, the music industry was really worried when these came out. They were like, "Holy, you know." <laughs> What's going on here? They'd never had anything like that. They haven't, they couldn't, you couldn't previously re um, record anything into that high quality at home before, you know. Uh, so they were really worried about people making copies and stuff like this. It wasn't, it, it that uh, soon died when computers started recording and then that was obsolete anyway. So it didn't matter in the end. But uh, anyway, that was quite interesting. But anyway, back to, to Kelly Joe. So he recorded this with an ADAT recorder and two microphones. This one here, the Neumann KM184 for his guitar. And this is a ribbon microphone. He didn't have one of these. Um, but he had a, a very famous AKG uh, C414 microphone for his for his vocals. And that's it. That's all he had. Um, and... If you can, give the album a listen. It's called Roll Away the Stone by Kelly Joe Phelps. And it's absolutely amazing. It sounds phenom phenomenal. Uh, it's one of my favorite albums. Uh, and, you know, it sounds... 
he he kelly joe is also someone who improvised a lot he was actually a jazz bass player for years before he started playing guitar um so he loved improvising and you can hear this in his songs you know um and i'm sure he kept in his mistakes you know uh and so some other some other albums as well uh the basement tapes by bob dylan as well that's another really great album is live this is with other musicians um and that's i think more reason to to record live in an, and we're recording we're we're talking about recording live in a studio setting you know um i think it's a different when you record a live performance you know um in a studio setting it's kind of it's kind of a different feel but but very similar especially when you have other instruments involved other musicians even more reason to do it because you're you're kind of you're vibing off the other person and you're all playing in the same room and and this is yeah this is more reason all the more reason to do it um pink moon by nick drake that's also another great album that was recorded live in the studio um really great album um and the beatles the white album recorded a lot of it was recorded live in the studio so you know this is not something that is new by any means <laughs> um so next we're going to talk about what is a mistake um and this is this is very subjective subjective you know uh because maybe what i see as a mistake i really shouldn't call them mistakes you know because to me they're not really it's all subjective you know is a wrong note is that a mistake it kind of is right if you play a wrong note it it's a mistake let me know what you think in the comments by the way what is a mistake to you when you play uh is a wrong note a mistake unexpected sounds if you have an unexpected sound i don't know your hands on the strings is that an unexpected sound you don't expect it you kind of do but i guess you kind of think i expect it when i slide my hands you're going to get some fret and and string sounds when you play um you know the sound of your chair these are unexpected sounds i love these sounds when i hear a sound when i hear a, a wooden chair in a in a recording i love it it can be a great great sound someone walking in in your recording <laughs> that's an unexpected sound is that a mistake possibly it could it could sound great you know it's all subjective um forgetting lyrics this is a big one this is something i do almost almost all the time <laughs> every performance i almost i forget my lyrics <laughs> i'm really bad at forgetting um it can be a mistake yeah sure if you stop if you completely stop oh oh sorry guys sorry i'll start again oh yeah that can be bad i think as long as you don't stop you know as long as you keep going nothing's a mistake really you know um you know <laughs> that's how i feel anyway that's how i feel um so if you just joined us welcome if you just joined us live if you're watching on the replay hello again <laughs> we're talking about why i leave in all my mistakes when recording a song and you know i just talked about what is a mistake and some mistakes i want some mistakes i'm better at hiding you know like playing a wrong note when i play a wrong note i'll get the guitar out for this when i play a wrong note um i try and play it again i or i try and make it part of the song um let me think of something I 
think about this. This bass line, right? Let's say I get this bass line a bit wrong. I accidentally hit this note. Oh. I'll turn it into something that sounds like, you know, I meant to do it. As an example, you know, um, and I think that just comes with practice. Um, I, I really try and do that. And sometimes it's easy to turn, turn a wrong note into, into part of the song. And sometimes it's, it's a lot harder to turn it and it's a lot more obvious, but, um, that's, that's, that's something that I, I try and do when I play a wrong note, you know? And unexpected sounds are part of it. I feel unexpected sounds are kind of part of the recording and make the recording what it is. Um, yeah, like, I mean, I'm just thinking of the, the most unexpected sound that you could have. Oh, yeah, doors are a big one, especially if, if you're recording in... in in a in a house in a in a flat an apartment a home someone slamming a door you know if you've got some really sensitive mics poof, they can pick up that low end big time that can be bad but it can be part of it you know it, it depends it's just how you how you feel you know um and let me know in the comments what's What's some unexpected sounds that you've had in your recordings? I'd love to know. Some interesting ones. Um, I'm just trying to think of some that I had. Um, no crazy ones. I think I even might have had a door in this one. Might have been a few doors closing, you know. I got people in... You know, I live in a flat. There's There's people coming and going... It, it happens, but it's okay. It was part of it, you know, um, especially with this album. It was, it was part of the album, you know, it was kind of a concept album, I guess you would call it. People knew, you know, I kind of in the, in the notes, I kind of explain exactly as kind of my apartment and, uh, yeah, kind of explain, you can't really see in here what what my idea was for this album and that it was all recorded in one day at home um you know so yeah it can be it can be part of the recording and i love that i love to hear these these sort of sounds it gives me as a listener anyway it gives me uh, an insight to it gives me an insight to the recording process you know and it, it, it i feel like I'm transported to to that place where they, it was recorded and that place in time as well. That's why old, really old recordings I really love to listen to and hearing these different things. Um, yeah. So, they're part of it. Unexpected sounds are part of it. Forgetting lyrics. So, forgetting lyrics. Let's see if I have another... I do have another uh, tip for this one. Here we go. Let's use the same thing. So if I was singing something, um, let's say, let's maybe call this Mad Eric. Uh, go, Eric, go. Play that blues, you know. And there I forgot the lyrics, right? I just keep playing. I mean, it's kind of obvious, <laughs> if you, especially if you know the song, but I just kind of keep playing. Or start again if it helps. Go, Eric, go. 
play that blues, you know mm, You find it hard to call You're hungry, cold, tired and bro Every day is the same Just gets worse, ain't got no one on this earth You know, so... Um, this is this is what I do personally. Um, let me know what you do in the comments. Uh, I'd love to know. Uh, what do you do when you forget lyrics? Do you stop? Do you completely stop? I mean, that's kind of the worst thing to do, right? Is to stop. The show must go on, right? Uh, yeah, I just keep playing. I just keep playing because no matter what, you can always play guitar. That's why it's so great when playing guitar and singing at the same time. Um, because you can just kind of come back to the start. Pretend, also another cool thing is not only just keep going, but use that moment when you forget. Go, Eric, go. Play that blues, you know. Kind of turn it into a solo, you know, make it make it seem like, oh, and just in that moment, I just got this inspiration and I just had to break out with a solo <laughs> or something, you know. Um, that's also another thing that I do. <laughs> um, it's not ideal, but it happens, you know, it happens to me a lot. I My memory is really bad. Let me know in the comments what you do. What do you do when you forget lyrics? I guess there's nothing else to do, right? Either stop or keep playing. What can you do until you remember them? Um, yeah. So another point is getting over the fear. Getting over the fear. Um, uh, how do you get over the fear? This is it, you know. Um, fear is a big one. Uh, I think it, it's something deep within us, isn't it? That we that we all fear of the fear of looking like an idiot, looking like a fool, of messing up. Of it's kind of the deer in the headlights. It's it's kind of. It's it's hard to get over. I know it's um, I I have certain fears for sure. Less so on playing because I'm just so used to it, and that's what just one of the things is just. I I believe to get over any fear, you just have to do it and do it a lot. <laughs> you know, I have a fear of live streams for sure. I've got a fear of live streams, <laughs> and specifically talking talking in front of an audience and a live stream is, is is even harder I find because you don't know who's watching could be no one could be thousands of people most likely no one for me right now but the, that's not the point anyway you know it, it's it's the fear of of looking like a fool looking like an idiot when you're when you're doing something in front of lots of people right how do you get over that I I believe is just doing just do it over and over as as much and as often as possible. I don't know if anyone here has been on many tours. Um, tours are great because you're doing lots of shows night after night, preferably, and by the end of the tour, I find always the last gig of the tour is the best gig because you're so used to by then you're so used to what you're doing you're so used to the songs you're so used to performing you've done so many that it's just you can forget about any fear um and just enjoy it and just experience it and it's just it's wonderful because the audience can then can see that you're just relaxed and that's the best thing is when you're relaxed and enjoying what you're doing. Um, and then the audience can see that, you know, and they they enjoy it more as well. So, you know, uh, keep doing it. 
is what I'd say to get over the fear. Anybody else have any tips with, uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any tips, either if you're watching live or if you are watching on the replay, if you have any tips for getting over the fear, the fear of anything, the fear of doing stuff, specifically the fear of performing live or recording, you know, um, Mainly we're talking about recording, aren't we? Um, I got off on a tangent of playing live. It's kind of this, it's very similar thing. Um, also what helps I find is kind of remembering that it doesn't matter in the end. It doesn't really matter. Um, when you try and make some, perfect something, if you try and make something perfect, then you're going to end up making a mistake. Because in your head, you're constantly thinking like, I can't mess up. I can't mess up. This has got to be perfect. And then in the end, you're thinking about that so much. And that worries you so much. I'm talking about me specifically, because I think about this a lot, um, that I end up making a mistake, you know. So it's much better. I find if I'm doing a performance, if I'm doing a recording, anything like this, a live stream, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter in the end of the day, you know. Um, but of course those fears come and, uh, there's nothing we can do about it. We, we gotta, gotta deal with them, you know, but the more we do it, the more you record, the better, the more comfortable we'll get for sure. I find, um, yeah. So if you're just joining us, welcome. Hello. My name's Fabian Holland. If you don't know me, I'm a guitarist, singer, songwriter, and I'm in Berlin currently. It's the evening in Berlin, and uh, welcome. Let me know where you're watching from. If anybody's watching live, let me know where you're watching from, either live or in the comments as well. Let me know if you're... Um, if you're watching the replay as well, let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to know. So uh, just a quick note about these live streams. So I'm I'm kind of experimenting with different things in different ways of, of doing these live streams. And then and they seem to be kind of evolving and I really enjoy them. And I kind of want to be doing them more and more. So I'm going to try and do them every Saturday, um, every Saturday at 9 p.m. European time, Central European time. So I'm in Berlin. Um, I think that's, or oh, I don't know the times on other, you have to work out the other times, but it's, I think it might be 12 noon uh, in the US Eastern and then Pacific Standard, the other side, I think it's 3 p.m. I believe don't quote me, just maybe look up on Google. <laughs> I should remember that, I should know that, and so I can just say them off. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, on just one thing on the live streams, just quickly. Um, I They seem to be developing into these things where I talk about a specific subject. Uh, I used to do just songs and anybody can come and kind of ask questions, but um, I'm kind of enjoying this, this kind of structure of talking about a specific subject and then I incorporate songs into that specific subject. Um, and I kind of have a bit of, so it's a bit more structured this way, you know, and it means people can watch it on the replay. So if you're watching on the replay, hi, welcome. Uh, you can also watch this, come watch this live every Saturday at 9 p.m. Berlin time. Um, I'd love to to hear from you. And, you know, one of the things I think about is what am I trying to do here? What am I trying to do on this channel? What am I doing with these live streams? And I don't know. I still don't know. You know, maybe they'll turn into some kind of podcast style thing. I'm not sure. Who knows? Who knows? Um, I'd love to have guests on. That would be really cool if I have guests on and have various different things and that would be cool but for now it's just me <laughs> um yeah 
so this is kind of the main the main thing and i i oh, so going back sorry thinking about what is the main purpose of this of this channel i know i talked about this earlier but just for anybody that that missed it um and for me it's to document what i'm doing on this channel uh is to document sorry what i'm doing creatively in my music and kind of just put it out there and and talk about it uh, and another thing is to build a community around people that share the same interests and musical interests and musical values as me um you know so if you're into acoustic guitars alternate tunings finger picking and depressing folk songs then you're in the right place <laughs> moving on anyway here we go um so we talked about getting over the fear and various things of doing that um so just repeating do the thing is to get over the fear i find as much often as possible record yourself as often as possible um and one of those things i think is is improvising as well you know um kelly joe phelps i mentioned earlier um he was a big improviser you know he was a he was a, a, a jazz bass player for years before he even started playing fingerstyle guitar um and and that came across in his music you know his love for not not necessarily jazz but his love for improvising and you really you really feel it in his music you really hear it and I definitely took a lot of inspiration from that and and I love imp imp improvising a lot. So I try and incorporate that into my music. Um, so then saying that, I will now do a song. So this song is called Banks of the D. It was actually on my first album. And... Mm, need to turn the mic on. There we go. And this is an old English folk song. It's an old mining song about, you know, when the miners used to get old, they didn't get work anymore, you know, because they were physically not as fit. As the young ones so they they didn't get as much work and this is a song about that and this has a lot of moments in the song where i improvise and this is just to kind of demonstrate that that improvising and you know improvising on a live stream anything could happen you know <laughs> my son could wake up and then i'll have to run and put him back to bed and then come back and finish the song you know who knows who knows what's going to happen but that's the that's the beauty of it and that's what i love so here we go banks of the d I met an old man under stress I could see and I sat down beside him and to me he did say Oh, I can't get employment for me here, it's turned grey Oh, I am an old miner 
break again Lots what I left for me pics I'd raffle them and I'd sell them And I'd haul them away But I can't get employment for me here It's turning grey Last Wednesday night To the reckoning I went To the culinary office I went straight for her nest And I got me wage packet And I was walking her way When they gave us me notice For me here it's turned grey Oh, I am an old miner, aged fifty and six. If I could get lost, I'd raffle me picks. I'd raffle them and I'd sell them, and I'd haul them away. But I can't get employment for me here. It's turned grey. That was Banks of the D, an old traditional song from the north of England, an old mining song. So today, if you just joined us, we're talking about why I leave in all my mistakes when recording a song. And we've been through the story of my my last album and how I recorded it all in one day in this room here uh, and why I love to leave um, mistakes in and and the fact that they're not really mistakes or I don't like to call them mistakes you know they're just unexpected sounds um, and we talked about a few different recordings that uh, a few sorry a few different albums that are uh, have recorded in a have recorded live but in a, a studio so or in a in a home 
and we talked about Kelly Joe Phelps album Roll Away the Stone um, and and we talked about getting over the fear you know getting over the fear of the red light the recording red light and the fear of playing live and the fear of messing up you know um, and that really it doesn't matter it doesn't matter um, so what is a good performance what is a good performance I should also say just quickly if you have any questions please feel free to uh, drop any questions and we'll we'll look at them towards the end but um, that's if you're watching also on the replay if you have any questions or now live feel free to drop them down and I'll answer them towards the end but what is a good performance this is something as well what do you think what let also let me know in the comments below what is a good performance you know um, because that's also very subjective um, I'd always choose a good performance with lots of mistakes in lots of quote unquote mistakes in over a song that is technically good and well played but isn't such a good performance you know I think there's a difference between a good performance and something that is technically well played uh, and I think that's a personal thing that's subjective you know I feel I do a good performance when I portray the emotions that I want to Oh, how to put this the emotions that I want to come out through my music I feel are true and have been portrayed if that makes sense I hope that makes sense um, that's what I think is that's what I feel is a good performance um, and if if I've done a good performance I feel like oh that take was it was just really really good it there was so so much emotions in there uh, really good use of dynamics and I just feel like oh yeah I just really hit that it just got it um, but there was kind of unexpected sounds in there mistakes if you want right I would always choose that over something that okay there's no mistakes in there it was technically good but just it was just lacking in emotion or there was just something missing you know uh, yeah but let me know in the in the comments below what what is for you a good performance you know what is a good performance for you let me know in the comments below so one thing that I really like to listen to is recordings from early blues musicians because well firstly I'm just really into those recordings and also there's some really early recordings you know from like the 20s and the 30s that they didn't have the technology to that we do now obviously um, so they had to rely on just really great musicians and a really good performance you know they had to rely on this to get a good recording um, it was a lot was on the musicians you know a lot of the time they just had one microphone in a room and a tape recorder and that's it you know um, they couldn't even do multi-track recording or anything like this you know um, back in the early days in the the, the beginning of, of recording so it uh, more it more and more it was put on the musicians to do a good performance and a lot of these blues musicians you know they didn't have a lot of time in the studio they they didn't they weren't able to rehearse and rehearse in the studio to do take after take after take you know it because that costs money it's a lot of time uh, 
a lot of the time, you know, they had to just do it first take, you know, straight out. And these these guys and girls were able to do it. You know, they were they were really, really great musicians, especially at just being able to come out with a take really well. Um, so that I really like listening to a lot of these early blues musicians. Um, and that reminds me actually something uh, when I was talking about how to get over the fear, you know, um, the fear of recording, the, fe the fear of messing up. Um, for me, for practicing, I found really good was busking. And I lived in, I lived in Bristol for a while. And Bristol is a really great city in the southwest of the UK. And there, you know, I spent my days busking. I learned my chops busking in, uh, in Bristol. And it was really, really good. It was great practice, you know. Um, I wasn't really doing it for the money, you know. Busking is, is <laughs> you don't, you can't really do it for the money. There's not really much money, but for the practice, it's great. It was really, really good. So I recommend anyone, if you want to practice, busking is a really great way of practicing. Um, anyway, back to the, the early blues musicians. So I really like listening to these recordings um and a lot of the time it was just kind of the spur of the moment you know there were a lot of these um talent scouts i guess producers that would hear these musicians and they would say do you want to record do you want to do a recording okay i'll book you in tomorrow afternoon you know and i have to go there and just do it and just perform and they could do it and it was really good um so you know, they didn't have the technology that we have now. If we do a mistake, we, <laughs> you can't just, oh, we'll just edit that out, you know. But I believe these mistakes is what makes recordings come alive and makes them human and makes them honest and raw. And I love this in recordings. I love putting this in my own recordings and I love listening to this in other people's recordings. So it was a spur of the moment thing for them, for the blues musicians, and they were able to do it, just record in one take, you know, as well. Um, this is something that I I really love to do. A lot of these ones on this album that I did, a lot of them were the first or second takes, you know. Um, I didn't have time because I basically gave myself 24 hours um to record this album because i had other people uh had other people that had to come in you know i had there was one other musician a friend of mine who played trumpet um and but there was a friend of mine a producer who came and recorded and by the way he just used uh, a zoom f8 portable recorder to record everything it's a really really good recorder um wasn't using a computer or anything just bought his zoom f8 it's like a little box with eight inputs that's it um and he he was you know i'd booked him for the day and friends of mine came and filmed it you know and a really friends of mine are um filmmakers and they have like you know really good cameras and they came and filmed it for me and you know I didn't want to use up too much of their time so I, I literally just had 24 hours so I couldn't do take after take after take I was I think I was limited to about three takes per song uh, going over three takes it was a bit like uh you know got to move on now kind of thing you know um but most of the time because I prepared beforehand i had i'd done most of the pre preparation beforehand i had practiced i knew exactly what what sound i wanted what i needed to do in every little moment of the song uh i didn't need too many takes you know and because generally i'm quite happy 
with certain sounds being in the recording, unexpected sounds, that's okay for me, you know. Um, so yeah, there was no edits on this on this album. Not one edit in the whole album. I didn't record what would have been cool if I had recorded the whole th whole album from start to finish, <laughs> you know, like a like a gig, like a concert. Um, that would have been cool, but no, I didn't do that because I had lots of other things, I had other instruments to set up between each song and stuff like this. So, uh, yeah, maybe maybe for next time, <laughs> that'll be cool. Um, but yeah, didn't have too many takes, but I was able to do it within within three takes on each song, you know. Um, and it's the same for these early blues musicians as well, you know. Uh, so that's why I love I love listening to these recordings. And there was a guy, John Hammond, back. Uh, he was a producer and talent scout, and he would go around and we, he would try and find some of these blues musicians. And but instead of bringing them to his studio, he would record them in their home or in in a in a in a in a home environment in a flat or in a in a house somewhere or something like this in but not in a studio so he'd bring very very limited gear obviously um he couldn't bring much with him because it's all back in those days it was all very heavy and bulky um and he recorded because he felt like he believed that they f the the recordings would would be the performances would be better when the musicians were in an environment that they could be comfortable in. And if you've ever been in a studio, I mean, it's really nice being in a studio, and it, and a lot of them are very homely and super relaxing. But you know, it's not an environment that you're used to, and recording at home. Of course, you're going to be the most comfortable in an environment that you're used to. So in your home is is the most comfortable we're all in, right? We're all in. We're all the most comfortable in our homes. There. I can talk. Honestly, I can, really. <laughs> right? So, yeah. Um, and he recorded Robert Johnson in 1937 in a hotel in Texas, um, that's one of his most famous musicians that he recorded and he recorded Crossroad Blues just in a hotel with very limited gear. And, you know, Crossroad Blues became one of the most iconic Robert Johnson songs that went on to inspire generations of musicians. So that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do another song for you here. Here we go. I'll do another song. And please feel free if you have any questions or anything like this. Um, just drop them down and we'll, we'll answer them at the end. But this is another one that I like to um, improvise with. I'll just do a demonstration of basically one of my songs it's called the river and it's again it's got these moments where I can improvise and it's something that I love to do um, and you know again anything can happen so we'll see
She's a drunk, a middle-aged mum She had children when she was too young Now it's something you might be surprised Three different kids from three different guys She spends her time drinking away Drinking special brew every day How did she end up this way? People walking past would say Down by the river You may find nothing but sit and tie Here at the river We all are just a bunch of He's a loner, he's an old man An old bolter they used to have plans Now all he has is a very long beard Keeping him awake on oh, all these tears He has one friend in all the world His old dog with a long grey coat He never sees the light of day just waiting for time to pass away Down by the river You may find nothing but sit and tie Here at the river We all are just a bunch of He's a dad, he's a nice guy A young father that doesn't know why He can't see his poor little son Because all these things this kid's mother has done He has no money, no job He'd do anything to earn a few bob You look at him and you might judge but all he feels for his son is love mm. Down by the river You may find nothing but sit and tie Here at the river We all are just a bunch of
That was The River. On my uh, second album, A Daylight Tomorrow. Cool. So, if you're just joining us, uh, today's live stream, we were talking about why I leave in all my mistakes when recording a song. And basically, I feel like mistakes are part of a recording. And I believe that it's important to leave them in. Um, within reason, obviously. If it's a complete, maybe actually, maybe if it's a complete mess up, maybe that should be left in as well. I don't know. Maybe it's part of it, you know. It, it tells a good story. But I think most people wouldn't leave things in. Um, and this is why I really like older recordings where it wasn't really possible to make any edits, you know. Um, so as we land the plane here, as we make our conclusion for this, this week's live stream, um, you know, in the age of AI and auto-tune where... <laughs> At a click of a button, we can. It's so easy to to make an edit. You know, you can you can. It's so easy just to just to make any edit, and everyone can do it. You know, um, but next time you make a mistake in recording, maybe think about leaving it in. You know, because maybe that is what makes the recording. The recording. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what makes the recording special you know maybe that's what makes gives it its unique sound makes it human um makes it honest makes it real you know um i think a lot of music especially pop music these days they're they're making so many edits in there and they're using so many different plugins and and stuff on the computer technology to to alter the original sound um i really believe that a recording should be left a recording and it's a moment in time and you really hear that in older recordings and this is what i love to hear you know and having said that this is just you know this is my own this is this is my own um thoughts on this you know this is just my opinion uh i'm not saying it's right for everyone um but i am saying that i do prefer to listen to to music that has these mistakes in um and i say mistakes like unexpected sounds um and especially recordings that where they're just recorded one take through all the musicians are in one room and they're just vibing off each other and uh you know a lot of the time it's one microphone but it sounds great because the performance is great and it doesn't matter that it's an, a really old recording and the technology is is obviously not as good as it is now so you're getting lots of hiss and lots of other noises but that's part of it i feel um and what's more important is the performance and is it a good performance and this is what i listen for and this is what i like to listen to so anyway thank you so much for hanging around and sticking with me um as i say i do this every single saturday saturday evenings and i'm going to try and look at different subjects uh for each live stream and base a few songs around those around those topics um but if you have any specific topics or questions or songs that you want me to play or anything like this just head over to my website at fabianholland.com and if you sign up there then you'll you'll get an option to submit any idea that you want for the live streams and i'll cover it in these live streams and i also with this if you sign up then it's completely free um i'll i send out vlogs and songs and lessons and and stuff like this every month as well um that's exclusive to my email subscribers so 
That being said, have a great day and evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And I will see you again very soon. Have a great one. Bye.